Hello everybody. Well, welcome back. Today we'll start a new topic from standard 12th chapter 9 and name of the topic is control and coordination. Before starting the topic, let us see some introductory part. We know that there are two types of individuals. Unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular organisms have simple organization of their life processes. That means only single cell performs all the functions of body. But in multicellular organisms you will find they show division of labor among the cells. In multicellular organization of the body organ and organ systems are required. And we already studied in standard 11 that cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs and organs combine to form organ system. Both plant and animal shows this and they also show control and coordination mechanism. Plants show this mechanism by sending chemical signals and various types of movements for example phototropic movement chemotactic movement etc animals show a gradual increase in the complexity by giving both electrical and chemical signals that is by nervous system and endocrine system these two systems work together even though they work together to control the body in coordination we have to study it separately we have to study nervous system separately and endocrine system separately so let's start with nervous coordination for this we have to start with the smaller animal starting with nervous system in hydra hydra is a nidarian it shows a diffused nervous system which is the most primitive nervous system the nidarians are thus the first animal group showing true simple nervous system here you will find it consists of sensory cells and nerve cells. Nerve cells can be seen throughout the body along with their fibers. Nerve cells are scattered throughout the body. They are interconnected to each other by synapses. Synapse is a gap between two neurons. And these synapses are present between the fibers of nerve cells they form nerve net there are two nerve nets and both the nerve nets are found in mesoglia that means in the mesoderm here the first one is connected towards the epidermis that is the outer layer and the second one is towards the gastrodermis that is the endoderm there are sensory cells scattered in the body wall and tentacles. This is the body wall. And this is the tentacle. These are all tentacles. You will find these sensory cells are scattered everywhere. But sense organs are lacking. Neurons have fibers but there are no sensory and motor nerves so this nerve impulse does not show direction if i say sensory nerve that means the nerve which provides sensation and motor nerve that means the nerve which helps in movement they have fibers but there are no sensory and motor nerves present thus you can say that in hydra Activation of sensory cells can happen at any point and from this point the impulse can be carried throughout the body in any direction. 
so that it brings about the movement of body and tentacles for example catching of prey the hydra can catch the prey by these sensation which they get through the nervous system so the diffused type of nervous system is the first important landmark of nervous system it is seen in tenophora and also in the gut wall of higher animals including man this was the detail of the first animal that was hydra let's understand hydra this is a hydra having nerve cells which are scattered throughout the body they are interconnected to each other forming nerve net so it shows a diffused type of nervous system nervous system in planaria planaria is a flat worm it belongs to phylum platyhelminthes it is the most primitive animal with central nervous system located on the ventral side of the body now here you will see it consists of a mass of cephalic ganglion you can see your brain brain is also called as cephalon so this is cephalic ganglion which appears like an inverted u shaped brain there lie a, this uh, nerve or this cephalic ganglion lie in the head region from each ganglion nine branches arises towards the outer sides <clears throat> ventrally from below the ganglion that is from below the ganglion you can see these nerve cords are seen these ganglia are called as ventral nerve cords they are interconnected to each other by transverse nerve which appears like ladder so in a ladder like manner they are connected to each other the peripheral nerves peripheral nerves you can see here at this position these are all peripheral nerves so peripheral nerve plexus arises laterally from ventral nerve cord periphery nerve cord includes sensory cells arranged in lateral cord in the body a pair of photosensory structure that is the eyes are located on the dorsal side of the brain there are single sensory cells scattered in the body so here we can see the difference in hydra there was nerve net in planaria there is a ladder shaped you can see nervous system that means in planaria the nervous system has been modified better than hydra you can see here the planaria this planaria is having a brain that is cephalic ganglion through which arises branches on the ventral side called as ventral nerve cord and they are interconnected together in a ladder like manner through transverse nerve and peripheral nerves arises laterally from ventral nerve cord neural tissues consist of two types of cells that is neurons you can see here these are neurons and glial cells or neuroglia these are the neuroglial cells or glial cells these cells act as supporting tissues they have to provide nourishment to the neurons here nerve you might have learned this word nerve nerve is nothing but it is a bundle of axon and we use the word nerve for those bundle of axons which are present 
outside the central nervous system when these bundle of axons are present inside the central nervous system then we call them as track so remember two words one is nerve other one is track the nerves may be sensory or motor or mixed type if i say sensory nerve that means it gives you sensation if i say motor nerve that means it helps in movement if i say mixed type of nerve or mixed nerve that means it consists of both sensory as well as motor nerve along with these nervous organs make up of nervous system these nervous system are found in higher animals it brings about the control and coordination of various activities of the body now for bringing various activities of the body there are certain material which are required for control and coordination of the body in that first thing is receptor receptor brings in the sensory input towards the central nervous system secondly processing is carried out in the central nervous system and then response is sent out through the motor command for example if you touch a hot pan your hand your skin comes in contact with that hot pan the receptors present in your skin that is the sensory impulse will carry that message and it will pass it to central nervous system in central nervous system that is either your brain or your spinal cord processing takes place and then it is converted into motor nerve and the response is traveled back from central nervous system to your hand that is your muscles that is the motor command because of which we remove our hand from that hot pan the nerves arising from the cytone of the central nervous system travels throughout the body transmitting the nerve impulse to and from the central nervous system next part is neurons or nerve cells these neurons or nerve cells they are the structural and functional unit of nervous system you can see this structure this is a multipolar neuron you might have studied about this in standard 11th now again we will study about a neuron each multipolar neuron consists of three parts that is a cytone or a cell body dendron if there are many we can call it as dendrites and axon this part is your cell body or cytone these are dendrites and this long structure is your axon if we talk about cytone cytone has distinct nucleus you can see it clearly here it consists of nucleus with nucleolus which is found around the nucleus and nucleoplasm a clear film of cytoplasm you can see is present which surrounds the nucleus around which there are neurofibrils nissl's granules you can see small dot like structure which are called as nissl's granules these nissl's granules and some other cell organelles are also present within the cytone body 
Now these nasus granules are nothing but they are riboprotein components. They play an important role in the synthesis of enzyme required for formation of neurotransmitter. Neurofibrils they play an important role in the transmission of nerve impulse. Now second part is your dendron. You can see here dendrons or dendrites present around the cyton or cell body. These are many small conical processes arising from cyton. They are highly branched into fine dendrites. You can see fine dendrites or branches can be seen easily around the dendrites. Nasus granules and neurofibrils both can be seen at the base of dendrons. They transmit message towards the cyton. That means whatever messages comes to your body is initially accepted by dendrons. Dendrons then pass these messages to cyton and then cyton transfers it into exon. Here the next part is your exon. You can see the long branch is exon. Exon is a single long usually unbranched you can see this one up to this portion is exon. They are unbranched processes arising from the cyton at the exon hillock. Here the place where you will find the connection between exon and cyton. This place is called hillock, exon hillock. It consists of a bundle of neurofibrils. Nasus granules are absent in exon. Terminally, terminally, that is at the end, you will find the exon gives out branches. These branches are called telodendrons. The exons carry the messages away from the cytons. The exons may give out lateral branches called collaterals. The terminal branches attach to a muscle, gland, skin or telodendrites of another neuron. The interconnection, you can see here, this is one neuron, this is another neuron and here you can find a gap. There is an interconnection between the two neurons. The interconnection between two neurons is called synapse. So a neuron consists of cyton, dendron and exon. The exon arises from exon hillock. End portion called as telodendron. They consist of myelin sheath. This myelin sheath or covering is actually produced by Schwann cells. In between these, you will find the node of Ranbio is present, which makes the conduction of impulse quicker. The cytons are generally found inside the central nervous system in the ganglia. Small groups of cell bodies inside the white matter of brain are called basal nuclei. Now see, you will study brain in detail. Further, brain consists of two types of matter. One is grey matter, other one is white matter. If you find the small cell bodies or groups of cell bodies inside the white matter, or they are scattered inside the white matter, then such scattered material are considered as basal nuclei. This basal nuclei actually provides us proper judgment. 
it helps in balancing the body so they are important nerve may be covered only by neurilemma in non medulated nerve fiber and it is covered with both medullary sheath and neurilemma in medulated nerve fibers so we can say that the nerve fibers can be of two types one is medulated nerve fiber and second one is non medulated nerve fiber now coming towards the details of medulated and non medulated nerve fibers medulated nerve fibers are also called as myelinated nerve fibers whereas non medulated nerve fibers are also called as non myelinated nerve fibers in medulated nerve fibers myelin sheath is present in non medulated nerve fibers myelin sheath is absent in medulated nerve fiber the conduction of impulse is fast it is 50 times faster than the non medulated nerve fiber so we can say that in non medulated nerve fiber the conduction of impulse is slow node of ranvio is present in medulated nerve fiber and node of ranvio is absent in non medulated nerve fiber all these things you already studied in standard 11th but this was necessary to understand to recall it once more now next part is neuroglial cells neuroglial cells are more in number than neurons the term neuroglia refers to the supporting cells i already told you that these are the cells which helps to provide nutrition so these are supporting cells these are the supporting cells of central nervous system and peripheral nervous system now what is central nervous system central nervous system consists of your brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system the nerves which arises from brain and spinal cord forms peripheral nervous system that means these nerves will be present within the body but away from the center of your body therefore they are called as peripheral nervous system most of the supporting cells of the nervous systems are derived from ectoderm that produces the neurons that means neurons are produced through ectoderm and these cells are also produced from ectoderm i think this much is enough for the day let us stop here we'll continue again in the next video till then take care of yourselves thank you